in this video. We're trying out extreme buffets here in Malaysia, starting with the cheapest buffet we could find, a buffet coming in at just a few dollars. They have a soup. This smells hungry, but it smells good at the same time. Ooh. From there, we're going to this country's most expensive buffet. There is so much here, I don't even know where to begin. Which one will give me the most bang for my buck? Soon, we'll find out. All right, let's see how their strip loin game is. The most expensive food at this buffet. Let's go for it. Buffets, they're a great way to stretch your dollar. They're also a great way to try and sample a bunch of different foods. But no matter the, yeah. But no matter the buffet, they still have to make money. So how do these two buffets do it? Well, let's go and find out. Right now we're headed to the cheap buffet. Our first buffet behind me, it's called Non Corner, and I believe it was established in 1983. That or that might be the address. What's astounding about this place is you can come here, eat all you want to eat, and it's only going to cost you three dollars and twenty cents. That gets me excited, and it makes me a little bit scared because they still have to make money. So, are they skimping on ingredients? What could they possibly be doing or serving in order to still make a profit off that very cheap price? We're going to go inside and see for ourselves what they've got. All right, we are entering now. Boom, fountain. Not bad. I believe this is the man behind Don Corner. Hopefully, I'll get to meet him soon. Let's head inside. Right here is the buffet, and they've got about 25 to 30 items. For three dollars and 20 cents, they could have five items. I'd still be pretty happy. They have a soup. It's like a sour laksa. This smells pungent, but it smells good at the same time. Reminds me of some good fishy Vietnamese soup. Right here we have beef lung. It looks like they smothered it with delicious sauces, and they made it taste good. Here we have fried tofu. We have seafood even. What kind of buffet that costs three dollars has crab claws? Are they packed with meat? No, absolutely not. But at least if you chew on it, you can get the flavor of crab. Nice. Right here, you can see fried fish of many kinds, and we have fried chicken right here. As we move down, we have a variety of curries or braised fishes and seafoods and sauces. We have a bunch of vegetables here. Not interested. As we get further down, we've got the sauces. Nobody does sauce better than Malaysia, except for maybe Indonesia. Now you guys fight about that in the comments. Uh, we have soy sauce. We have this big, thick, delicious sambal sauce. Right now, I want to get course number one. Sit down and eat. For this soup, you need to put the noodles in first. Right here, we have some delicious rice noodles. Very bouncy. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of onion. Look at that. Oh, it's like a fish sludge. Next, I gotta get some of this beef lung. They put a little bit of lettuce on top to make everything look fresh. I like it. I like fried tofu, especially with a good dipping sauce. And I gotta try some of this fried chicken. Course one. Let's get into it. Right here, we have our soup and noodles. Really, what it looks like is kind of a fish stock that's been boiling. Since 1983. Let's just try the broth to begin with. Oh wow, spicy, savory, super fishy, but in a good way. And there's a lot of bones. Do not scoop this up for your three-year-old. Give it to them and leave the room. They will perish. Here we have some chunks, some broth, onions, and noodles. Very sour. There's meat in there, but it's almost just like tiny meat particles floating about the broth. This is a cleverly put together dish. It tastes delicious. Over here, this plate is astounding. This is a crunchy fried tofu. Back in the day when I was dieting and I didn't know many recipes, I would oven bake tofu and then dip it in honey mustard. It's delicious. I was a soy boy. Cheers. Now I'm a soy man. It doesn't have a ton of flavor. It has a ton of crunch. What it needs is a little bit of sambal. There's fermented shrimp paste in here, and this is perfect if your tofu doesn't have enough kick. It's got flavor now. Holy cow! Holy cow! Very spicy, a little sweet, super salty. Right here we have the beef lung. Mm. The lung is kind of nice and chewy, but then around that there's just so much flavor. It's sweet, it's savory, it's sour, it's awesome. That's incredible. At last, right here we have the fried chicken. It's got a nice orange marinade on the outside that's dyed it this pleasant color. Cheers. Mm. Crunchy on the outside, juicy on the inside. And these are good chunks too. That's beautiful breast meat. I love breast meat. They won my heart already. Our expensive buffet is gonna have to be 20 times better than this if they're gonna get the most bang for my buck. In a moment, I'm gonna get some more food, but first I have to interview the owner to learn more about this place. I'm here with Mr. Boom, owner of this buffet. Sir, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's really incredible how much value you can get here for the money, because I saw, okay, it's a little bit more than $3. It's just gonna be like vegetables, noodles, rice, but you have a lot of meat. Is this a charity or are you actually making money? That's a good question. So I go on volume where I make a little bit of money and balance the charity. What is the most expensive thing in the menu? Oh, the meat item, and then ikan bakar. Is that fish? Is that beef? What is fish. that? That's fish. 
So that is the main attraction on uh, lunch. Right here we come to the grilling station. They just put these fish on here. The fish are wrapped in banana leaves and they are bubbling away. How long will it take the fish to cook? Normally it takes around 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, that's a long time. You say your business strategy is to get volume, lots yeah. of people. How many people are coming in here each day? 400 to 500 people in the lunch crowd. And then I got four, five, six buses coming in. Place is nice, food is cheap, finger licking good. This is vegetable tutur. It is basically a vegetable dough that's fried. It's beautiful. You like this one? Ah, uh, very much. Who doesn't like fried food? Come on. I noticed that if people want to, they can also have their wedding reception here. Yes, every weekend from Friday to Sunday, public holiday is packed. Well, sir, I regret to say I've already had my wedding, but perhaps one day when I redo my vows I could come back. Please do. Cheap and good. Cheap and good. That's what I like. Guys, check it out. We've come to the bread frying station right here. We have our dough. The dough's already been flattened out. He gives it a little bit of a whack and then he gently eases it over here into the oil. In India, when I've had this type of thing, it's called puri. But here it's called roti madura. Look at how it gets big and it puffs up as he fries it. This looks delicious. This is going to be perfect for soaking on some stew or gravy. Let's get to round two. Step one, this is beef kima. That looks delicious. Trying to grab some of that freshly fried bread. Here we have our fried chuchor. Oh, lots of brown colors. It's a brown theme on this one. And the last we have that fish that looks perfect. Let's go eat. Look, I did get silverware because I'm going to eat the Malay way with my thingies. Well, with this hand in particular. This hand is for other naughty things. Right here, fried stuff. It looks real good. Mmm, well seasoned, very delicious, well spicy. It's just like a spongy little veggie fried thing. Speaking of being fried, we also have the bread. Look at that, it's like a soft pillow. I wanna lay my head down on this at night and have dreams about carbohydrates. This is destined for our beef kima over here. Mmm, that's really good. It's got tons of spices like a curry, but it has some of that stewed beef essence. It's very delicious. I kinda wish I had a spoon. Solved it. Right here we have that fish we were waiting for. It's caked in this beautiful sauce. And then I have an additional sauce. This is like a sweet soy sauce flavored with onions and chilies in there. Oh, that's a good sauce. It's light, it's sweet, it's a little bit spicy. The fish is a little bit fishy, but people don't mind the fish flavor here. You go to the West and people are like, my fish better not taste like fish. It better taste like nothing. There's one food that was made famous by the owner of this place. He is Mr. Boom, and his famous food is the roti boom. Let's go check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Hussein. He's about to make the roti boom. He starts with a dough. He puts some butter on top of it. He slathers it. He whips it around, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And then he shrinks it down, wraps it up, and then that, that that's it. That's the dough part. That is going to make it incredibly flaky once it's finally cooked. Next, he puts some butter on the tawa, and he puts the dough on top of that. Everything so far has been fantastic, but what is something you're really proud of? I'm proud of my roti boom, 1983. I implement the roti boom. It's a small prata and the name boom comes from me. So I'm the founder of roti boom. And is that a fried roti? A more or less like a prata, more or less a like roti china, but different version with more ingredients. Egg and butter inside to make it more crispy and nice. Here we go with the flip. It looks incredible. Golden brown and now frying on the other side. Boom, he takes it out, he smashes it, he puts it in the basket. And take a look at that. Soft, nice, and maybe even burning his fingertips. Right here, our final dish. So the first one, the chef uh, kind of molested it. So I'm going to put that one to the side. This one though, it's still blazing hot. It's just crispy, flaky bread with a load of butter infused. I'm going to try it out plain just like this. Cheers. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. Like eating fresh baked biscuits. It's flaky, it's buttery, it's soft, it's steaming, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Not only that, you get a little bit of a show, you know? The... Oh. What are you... Did you get it on camera? Yeah, it's pretty epic. This, I love it. But this marks the end of this buffet. And now we will transition to the most expensive buffet we can find in Malaysia. They are going to have to work real hard to beat this place. We have come to our second and final destination here at Shangri-La Hotel in Kuala Lumpur inside Lemon Garden. That is the name of their buffet. It is the most expensive buffet we could find in this city. Let's head there now. Just in this one buffet, there are over 200 items, including fresh seafood. So you might be wondering, what about the price? Well, the price is just over $42. Let me come show you now. There is so much here, I don't even know where to begin. Luckily, they've categorized it into different regions. First of all, we have Chinese cuisine, we have Malay and Indian cuisine. Over here, we have Western and Italian cuisine, and then we have desserts, too. Let's go this way and work our way over, starting with Chinese cuisine. Section one, soup. This is double boiled white radish with chicken soup. Okay, listen, don't start with this. This is good if you're like sick or something, but then don't come to a buffet. I'm gonna skip the soup and go over here. All right, right here, they have a fish head. Amazing that the fish head is remaining because people here in Malaysia love fish head soup so much. So right here, 
here we've got roasted duck. I'm gonna throw some of this on my plate here. They have Mongolian sauce fried chicken. That actually looks fantastic, but a bit too basic. They have fried rice. You have to have a carby base, but this is no average fried rice. It is covered with these fried silver anchovies. I can't go to a buffet without getting mantau, Chinese fried bread. That is the Chinese section of my plate. Let's keep moving. Here we have creeped into the Malay and Indian cuisine section. Right here we have a vegetable martabak. It's almost like a fried sandwich, but with kind of a roti instead of bread on the outside. Right here we've got the satay. We've just run out of chicken satay, but we have beef right here. I am a big fan of beef, so no worries about that. And then don't forget to get some sauce. I mean, where's the sauce container? Ah, thank you. Some angel just came from the crowd and gave me a bowl for my sauce. Right here we have a delicious peanut sauce. That's exactly what you want to have. All right, we have our first round right here. Let's go eat. Boom, we have all shades of brown here right now. We'll have to get a little bit of color next time. I'm gonna start with this. This is sauteed. You take that, you've drowned it in peanut sauce like this. Cheers. The meat is seasoned beautifully. Tons of spices. I can taste lemongrass in there. And then, of course, the peanut sauce, also spicy, savory, and just full of rich peanutty goodness. This is a vegetable martabak. The martabak, mart, 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 mart. Rick and Morty. The Rick and Mortabak is a very special street food here in Malaysia. I've even seen it in Mombasa when I was traveling in Kenya. Let's try it out. Delicious, beautifully spiced, it tastes like Indian food. Here's the truth. I'm trying to find interesting foods to show you and include some for myself that I just genuinely like. Like this, a fried Chinese bun. This can be eaten with beautifully moist roasted duck. Mm -hmm. This is course one, let's keep going. I'm here with Chef Mohamed Safi. He is the man in charge when it comes to this buffet. Put her there. My team, we looked for the most expensive buffet that we could find in Kuala Lumpur, and this is it. Yes. Why is this the most expensive buffet? First, our buffet spread is huge. It's more than 200, 300 items. We're getting started with round two here at the seafood station. First up, oh, uh, nobody saw that, right? That one just plummeted to its second death. Here we have crab legs and crab claws. Muscle, something I wish I had more of. Even here, they have like a tiny little scallop. Second one, what we offering on the buffet, the quality of the product, what we are brought in into the, uh, this hotel, an example, I show you the oysters. This is a fresh oyster. Two times a week, we've flown from the U.S. There's an oyster station over here. Boom. Everyone's using a tweezer, so I'm going to use my hands. Just don't touch all the oysters. It's pretty simple. The seafood plate is complete. Up there in the seafood line, there is tension in the air. Everyone's all smiles on the outside, but on the inside, they want the best seafood. They're battling it out for who gets the best stuff. Right here, we have a shrimpy. I'm going to rip the head off like I'm in the WWE. Boom, and just like that, it's naked. Just like me the first time I went camping. Wait a minute. I should talk to a therapist about that. Cheers. Mm. Chilled, dense, shrimpy, beautiful. Right here we have a mussel. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of lemon. Oh yeah. It's good because it's a mussel, but they didn't do any stuff to it. It's just steamed. Here, half a mud crab. The claw here has been shattered. Either that or this crab got into an awful car accident before they brought it here. Hit it with a little bit of lemon. Cheers. It's sweet, it's dense. The claw meat, it is the best of all the meats. Last of all, we have an oyster. A little bit of hit of vinegar. These are freshly shucked, and it should be breathing its last breath right now. Cheers. That's not a bad one. Eating oysters, it's like going on a Tinder date. You just never know what you're gonna get. So that is the seafood. I'm gonna get one more course. Let's go up there and see what else we can find. Some people, they come to a buffet, they pay a lot of money, they just wanna eat the most expensive foods. What is the most expensive food you're serving here? We have a strip loin on the buffet. The carving, we come for you. The whole, this cum is around five kilo. It's very nice, juicy. So I just got some good tips from the chef. I asked him, what is the most expensive, valuable thing here? He said this, the roasted beef strip loin, and that's what I'm getting now. You are the man in charge here. What are your responsibilities? Responsibility is to make sure the satisfaction of the every single guest came into this uh, restaurant. They are very satisfied with this food quality. We trying to don't drop the quality. We just trying to move up, move up. I think you're doing great work here. The yeah. buffet looks amazing. Yeah. It's a great value for the money. I'm gonna go try some of that expensive sirloin now. Sure. The secret's out. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our final course right here. And come take a look. Strip loin, big, fat, juicy. There's vegetables, there's stuffing. And there's this right here. This is the mustard the chef just gave me personally. I'm gonna cut a piece. It's pretty soft, pink and juicy. The most expensive food at this buffet. Let's go for it. Oh, look, it's juicy, it's fatty, it's tender. It's an absolute delight. The one thing it lacks is a little bit of flavor. So I'm gonna throw some of the mustard on there. All right, mustard strip loin. 
It's like a hot mustard. It's got some tang, it's got some bite. If you love animals, let me rephrase that. If you love animal parts that have been put into an oven, you will love this. This is fantastic. So that is the most expensive buffet that we could find here in Kuala Lumpur. The chef is a great guy. The team is doing amazing work here. But now I have to go outside and decide which buffet gave me the most bang for my buck. It is gonna be a tough one. Let's figure it out. Boom. Guys, today we went to the cheapest and the most expensive buffets we could find here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And my God, this is perhaps the hardest decision of my life. I feel like I'm choosing between my child and my wife and I don't even have kids yet. So one thing to keep in mind as I choose is I'm not trying to choose the best buffet. I'm trying to choose which buffet gave me the most bang for my buck. In that case, I would have to say it was the cheap buffet. It's hard to outdo a buffet that costs three and a half dollars. A dollar and a half on weekends, by the way, for this to be better, it would have to be like 20 times better. Kudos to the three and a half dollar maestro himself. And the food was very impressive, especially for the price. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stick around because we have one more video in Malaysia and then we're out of here. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. That's not my hotel. If you love Indian food, then you're going to love our new channel, Best Ever Food India. Subscribe now for weekly videos showcasing the most unique street food from around the country.